This is a tutorial on exponential functions. The standard form of an exponential function is y is equal to a times b to the x. Now if we wanted to find out what effect this a has on our function, we would first have to look at the function y is equal to b to the x. This function doesn't have an a, or its a is one, so it has no effect on the y values. Now for every x value, we have a b to the x value, and that gives us our y. If we take this same b to the x value, and we start multiplying it by a, we're gonna get a different y value, and we wanna compare what these different y values look like. Well, if the absolute value of our a is between zero and one, then we have some fraction. And if we multiply our b to the x value by some fraction, then our y value is gonna shrink. And if our y value gets smaller, then we're gonna shrink the graph of y is equal to b to the x. Our y values are gonna get smaller, so vertically, our graph is gonna shrink. Now, if our a value is greater than one, or the absolute value of our a is greater than one, then we're multiplying our b to the x value for every x value by some number greater than one, which means our y value is gonna get larger. So when our absolute value of our a is greater than one, we're gonna stretch the graph of y is equal to b to the x. Again, we're gonna do this vertically. So let's look at this a little bit closer. Here we have three functions, y is equal to two to the x, y is equal to one fourth times two to the x, and y is equal to four times two to the x. Our y is equal to two to the x is gonna be our parent function. You can think of this as our y is equal to b to the x. And then for y is equal to one fourth times two to the x, our one fourth is gonna be our a, that's a fraction. And then our four in our third function here is gonna be our a that's greater than one. So to investigate this, let's look and see how our y values change when we plug in these given x values. First, I'm gonna plug in negative three into y is equal to two to the x. If I do that, I'll have y is equal to two to the negative third power. Well, two to the negative third power, that's one eighth. If I plug in a negative two for x, I'll get y is equal to two to the negative two, and that's equal to one fourth. Plug in negative one, we'll have y is equal to two to the negative first power, that's equal to one half. Next I plug in zero, I'll get y is equal to two to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is just one. If I plug in a positive one for x, I get y is equal to two to the first power. That's just two. Plug in a positive two, we get y is equal to two squared. That's equal to four. And then we plug in three for x and we get y is equal to two to the third power. And that's just equal to eight. So we have our y values for these selected x values of our parent function. Now let's look at our function when our a is a fraction. If I plug in negative three for x into this function, I'll have y is equal to one fourth times two to the negative third power. Now two to the negative third power, that's just one eighth. So I have one fourth times one eighth and that's equal to one 32nd. If I plug in a negative two for x, I'll have y is equal to one fourth times two to the negative two. Two to the negative two power is one fourth, so we have one fourth times one fourth, and that's equal to one sixteenth. Well, there's a pattern going on here. I can think of my y values for this new function well, they're just equal to one fourth times my two to the x y values. If I take this value of two to the x and I multiply it by my a value, which in this case is one fourth, I'll get one thirty second. So every one of these new y values I'm coming up with are my old y values just multiplied by my a. 
which in this case is just one fourth. So if I take one half and I multiply it by one fourth, I'm going to get one eighth. If I take one and multiply it by one fourth, I'm going to get one fourth. Take two and multiply it by one fourth and I'll get one half. Four multiplied by one fourth is just one. And eight multiplied by one fourth is two. So now I have all of my y values for y is equal to one fourth times two to the x. So now let's look at the function y is equal to four times two to the x. Once again here our y values are going to be equal to our a value which is four but we're going to take that a value and we're just going to multiply it by our parent function values or our values of two to the x because we're going to plug in the same x values. So I'm going to end up taking each two to the x value and I'm going to multiply it by four. So if I take this one eighth, I'll have one eighth and I multiply it by my a value, which is four. That's four over eight or one half. So one eighth times four is one half. One fourth times four, well, that's just one. One half times four, that's two. One times four is four. Two times four is eight. Four times four is 16. And eight times four is 32. So now we have our values for four times two to the x. Notice that y is equal to four times two to the x. These values are all our original values multiplied by four. And our function y is equal to one fourth times two to the x. These are all our original values multiplied by one fourth. So let's look at the graphs of these three functions. If we went to our parent function, y is equal to two to the x, and we pulled an x value of say two, we would find out that our y value is four. If we went to y is equal to one fourth times two to the x and went to the x value of two, we would find our y value is one. And in our third function, y is equal to four times two to the x, when x is two, our y value is 16. So you can see that by multiplying our parent function by an a, we're either shrinking or expanding the graph vertically. So now let's look at what happens when we have a negative a value versus a positive a value. Here again we're given two functions. We have y is equal to two times two to the x and y is equal to negative two times two to the x. Again we're given several x values. We're going to plug these into these functions. If I plug in negative three into y is equal to two times two to the x, I'll get y is equal to two times two to the negative third power. Two to the negative third power is one eighth and one eighth times two is just one fourth. If I plug in negative two for x, I'll get y is equal to two times two to the negative two power. Two to the negative two power is one fourth. One fourth times two is one half. Next I'll plug in negative one. I'll have y is equal to two times two to the negative first power. Two to the negative first power is one half. One half times two, that's just one. Next I'll plug in zero. I'll have y is equal to two times two to the zero power. Two to the zero power is just one, and one times two is two. Next I plug in a positive one, so I'll have y is equal to two times two to the first power. Two to the first power is two, times two is four. Next I plug in two for x, I'll have y is equal to two times two to the second power. Two squared is four, four times two is eight. And then lastly, I plug in three, I'll have y is equal to two times two to the third power. Two to the third power is eight, eight times two is 16. So I have all my functions values for y is equal to two times two to the x. Now let's find my function values for y is equal to negative two times two to the x. So once again, I plug in negative three for x. I'll get y is equal to negative two times two to the negative three power. Two to the negative three power is one eighth. One eighth times negative two is a negative one fourth. 
Next, I plug in negative 2 for x. I'll get y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the negative 2 power. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 1 fourth times negative 2 is a negative 1 half. Notice we're going to get the exact same values that we had before, just the negative versions of them, because the only thing that's changing is that our a value goes from being 2 to negative 2. So instead of 1 as a y value, we're going to have negative 1. Instead of 2, we'll have negative 2. Instead of 4, we'll have negative 4. Instead of 8, we'll have negative 8. And we'll have negative 16 for 16. So now I have all my y values for y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the x. And let's compare these graphs. Here in blue, we have the graph of y is equal to 2 times 2 to the x. And in red, we have the graph of y is equal to negative 2 times 2 to the x. Notice that these graphs are exactly the same. They both have the asymptote of the x-axis, or when y is equal to 0. And the fact that the only thing that's changed is our a value. And our a value just went from being positive to negative. When that happened, we have the exact same graph. That graph is just reflected across our asymptote in this case, the x-axis. Now the last thing we have to talk about is translating exponential functions. Here in blue, we're given the graph of y is equal to 2 to the x. Then we also have the functions y is equal to 2 to the x plus 3, and y is equal to the 2 to the x minus 3, where the 3 is outside of our exponent. Whenever your new constant, or this plus 3, is inside the exponent, that is going to cause a horizontal translation. Whenever the constant is outside the exponent, like this minus 3 here, this is just a change in the y value. So this is going to cause a vertical translation. If you can think of the formula y is equal to b to the x minus h plus q, the q is our vertical translation. This minus h is our horizontal translation. When the constant is in the exponent, a positive addition will give you a negative horizontal translation. But when your constant is outside of the exponent, you need a positive q to get a positive vertical translation. So this completes the tutorial on exponential functions.